Hello, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. If you listened to the last episode, we gave an update on my personal prep and kind of how things have been going. And we did also talk about our communication, our dynamic as coach client, as well as business owners, as well as husband and wife. And so we did want to do another podcast episode, being able to talk about how you can be supportive for your spouse, your partner, your friend, your whatever they may be while they're in prep, because it is something that we definitely hear a lot from clients and just from online of people saying that they get uh, comments from loved ones saying that they can't wait for them to eat normal. They get very tired of them carrying around their Tupperware or their life revolving around their food and training or just the time commitment that prep becomes. So we wanted to talk through a few of those things that we've either heard from clients or even experienced ourselves because Alex and I have both competed before and we have both been the person that has to support the other one in prep. And we've learned through multiple experiences. And we've also had relationships outside of each other while we were in prep that were hard to navigate through. So we thought it would be really helpful to be able to talk about this, especially with competition season kicking off. And if you are someone who is a lifestyle client or just into lifestyle as general, there is a podcast episode that we'll have linked in the show notes going over how to deal with lack of support on your fitness journey. So if you are dealing with lack of support, this is going to be a great one as well as that other episode, but we're talking definitely more towards competition prep within this episode. Yeah. And and I think that the biggest thing within the support aspect, and we can probably contrast the uh, previous relationships relative to our own relationship and kind of how it's transformed from season to season, because now we've gone through multiple seasons for you specifically, and kind of talk about the factors in which we struggled with in the first one, things that we did to correct those things and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think that's great. So uh, I, I do want us to each talk as the competitor and as the support system, because we both have been that. Um, And not only for each other, but also for other friends that have competed and being able to support them in their goals and their dreams and their desires. So within that, do you want to go ahead and take off and talk about how your prep went within a prior relationship and some different things that kind of culminated or happened that made you either feel really negative as a competitor and impacted your prep or how that went for yourself? Sure. So within uh, the, the previous relationship itself and and prepping, I think that one thing that I ran into is that I was was and am someone um, who puts others first oftentimes. And so I was always in a situation of like, let's do what you want to do and I'll figure out um, – what I need to do for myself later. And so I was doing a lot of, and and I was coaching clients at the time as well. So I was prioritizing time and then I was really staying up throughout the night to answer check-ins and do things of that nature. And uh, we would go and do things and I would more so focus on the other individual relative to my own meals or things that I needed to get done, training sessions. I would train super late at night. You guys that have listened to the podcast know that that was kind of my MO, especially at that time in my life, Um, training super late at night just to basically make life better for everyone else around me and then putting myself last. And I think that, um, that could, a lot of that could have been resolved potentially with me being more vocal, explaining what was important to me, um, prioritizing my time differently, being vocal in those situations, I think would have been a big help, but I I didn't know what I didn't know in that scenario. And then coming to a a better relationship and more communicate, like a better communication with my partner, uh, type scenario, I was able to find a, a better place of prioritizing both because you can have prioritization of your goals and you can have prioritization of your spouse or your significant significant other um, throughout the prep itself. It's just going to have varying levels, if you will. Yeah. And what? how would you say that impacted your prep and your experience through prep and your physique by putting everyone else first and then kind of letting yourself just kind of pick up the scraps and go from there? Um, I wouldn't say that it was was beneficial for my physique by any stretch. I think that it was a detriment to my physique and it was something where I was only 
able to give what I feel in hindsight to be like a 70 or 80% effort because I was putting myself last and, and putting myself in a position where I wasn't really able to give 100% effort. And I take full accountability for that. I don't think that in those scenarios, it's fair to like the, the significant other or the spouse for the competitor to be like, well, it was your fault that I didn't compete better or what have you. Like it, it at the end of the day falls on your shoulders for not being better at communicating and vocalizing those different factors. Um, but also at that time, I didn't have great communication skills to begin with. So it would have been hard to communicate without the skills uh, to start off with. But um, it definitely hindered my physique as a whole. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a big part that I wanted to carry from the last podcast episode was the power of communication in these situations. Because when it comes down to it, I think that the support and the communication that we've had has allowed me to be successful in multiple realms of my life, but especially within competing of, of course, it does help that he is in the sport, he coaches in the sport, he understands the sport, and he's also experienced the sport, which is the hardest thing of uh, oftentimes I just want to be like, hey, have the significant other go through it and they'll really understand. But that's, of course, not the the soundest of advice <laughs> to just be like, hey, you experience it and then let me know how it goes for you. But more so of being able to be so vocal because I was in the same boat as Alex of not having the greatest communication skills. And that's something that I've learned through the years that there was still fault on me where I like to put blame on other people in those scenarios because I just wanted them to read my mind or do what was best for me without knowing what was best for me. Uh, and now looking back, I can see oh, if I would have just vocalized that or communicated or just point blank gave them feedback, I probably would have been in a different situation instead of having either built up resentment or frustration that I didn't need to have in those those outcomes that happened. So for that communication and for that understanding, is there something that for clients that you have that you feel like you've been able to vocalize to them that they can talk to their spouse about or significant other to help their prep go along? Or what do you normally suggest for your prep clients before prep starts for their relationship? A couple of different factors. I think that um, going into the prep itself, it's a matter of being very vocal with why this means so much to you, why this is something that you want to do, and then also explaining to them all the things that you know that are kind of upcoming, some of the struggles that you may experience and being vocal with them if you're having a, a hard time, but also not only painting prep as this negative thing, um, because oftentimes, let's say that the individual, they they work their nine to five, they're not working in the same environment like Sue and I are. So you get to see your, your spouse on a pretty limited basis. Um, and so they may only hear negative things that you talk about with the prep, that you're so hungry, that you're so tired, um, that you're just beat up in general. And so if they've never been around it before, that's the only information that they're pulling from the prep that it's the worst thing in the world. You, you feel terrible. You don't look like you feel great. And then those different factors. So it's important to share some of the victories with them and, and progress and those different factors, because it can be very difficult for the spouse who has never been a part of it to see some of the emotional changes and the ups and downs that are, are being experienced without you know, hearing more of the ups and only really seeing the really harsh downs at, at times and those different things. Yeah. And I think that some of those things from that podcast that I mentioned of how to deal with lack of support, I know in my past, when I first got into a life of fitness and really made the pivot from a life of drinking and partying to going all in and fitness, and then I started competing soon after that, I basically wanted everyone in my life to just say, okay, great, we support you without even understanding what I was doing. And I think that's where my biggest fault came in that situation. Of course, there was a lot of things that could have been handled better. But for me personally, I could have done a better job of explaining what was going to happen, what to expect and why, like Alex said, why it was important to me. And so being able to sit down and have a conversation and don't assume anything of, oh, they understand competing. They understand what this means to me. Because I can tell you from the outside looking in, it very much so just looks like people that carry around their Tupperware and their water and oftentimes are miserable and 
people don't get that. They might love looking at the glam and the finished product, but oftentimes they don't get what a prep really is and what a prep is to you. So being able to sit down and have a conversation with whoever it is that you want their support and explain what the prep is, being able to give them some different resources on what they can learn. I know we have a podcast series of what to know as a first-time competitor, and we did have some competitors' spouses listen to that and be able to take away some really great information that they would have otherwise not known, and you're just expecting them to understand and know this. So there is a burden, or I don't know if burden is the correct word, but there is a responsibility on your part to ensure that the people around you can support you best by communicating with them of what to expect and what support you need from them. Right. And I, I think that also another piece is getting them involved as much as they're willing to be involved is, is helpful because it's something where if you are doing your prep or doing your, your training, doing your cardio, doing your meal prep and those different factors, and that's taking up a lot of your free time in which previously to the prep itself, you were getting to spend time with them or getting to engage with them more or what have you, they're going to feel very secluded and not feel like they're involved. And so as much as your your significant other is willing to be involved, allow them to be a part of it, help you with you know posing or um, not necessarily help you with posing, but like be a part of maybe filming or getting them into the gym and, and what have you, like doing as much as you can to involve them throughout the prep is going to be a helpful piece of the puzzle too. Yeah. And we've talked about how prep is hard. And I, I'll never be the one to say, like, if you truly want to be elite in the sport, there's not a lot of balance, so to speak, that comes within a prep. And that's very hard for someone you're in a relationship with or a friendship in to navigate through you not having that same quote unquote balance. And I would say like for your prep and then for my past few preps, a really difficult part was that we lost the aspect of spontaneity um, to a certain degree. And it was also something that we weren't able to do like the normal things that people would do as far as going out to dinner or just grabbing a bite to eat. It had to be regimented. And we've learned a lot through those situations of, hey, this is what we need to do to ensure our relationship is in the best spot throughout this prep. Because at the end of the day, for me personally, prep doesn't matter if my relationship's not in a good spot. And so if prep was impacting the quality of my relationship to its core, and it wasn't just like, okay, we're both having a hard day right now, that would be it for me. It would be this prep no longer serves me. My relationship is number one. And so if you have that mentality going in and you can tell that person, or if you have children or a family, being able to still be as present as as possible with them because you can take the mentality of, yes, this is a selfish sport, which it is, and it's all about me and I need to do X, Y, and Z. But you can also change around your schedule a little bit, maybe not to the extent Alex did within the prep that he's referring with a past relationship, but move around your schedule so it can be the best suited for your life, your lifestyle, and the people in your life that you love. Because if you just do all of this and you place amazing, but you You've really endangered your relationship in it, then you also have to weigh what that cost is for you as well. Right. Do you want to get into some communication tips more so like for the the athlete to be able to communicate better with the spouse to mm -hmm. kind of set a better foundation for things? Yeah. Uh, actually, my first tip is going to be one that might be a little bit odd, but Google Calendar. <laughs> Uh, the reason being is that it is hard to keep track of your own schedule, let alone someone else's schedule. And I find it very helpful to be as transparent as possible with Alex as far as what my schedule is. So he knows what expectation he has of the day or of me going into it. So within our Google Calendar, we have a shared Google Calendar and I'll mark in there when I'm doing cardio, when I'm training and what else I have to do. And then we do have touch points throughout the day of like, oh, what else do you have the rest of the day and I'll be like, oh, I have to get this many steps left or I have to do X, Y, and Z. And it's very helpful, I would say, for both of us to have those um, times that we understand what the other person is doing because I would say that the biggest tiffs in these situations come from a lack of communication of just being like, well, I wanted to spend time with you at that point. The other person not knowing and them having that th thought process of, oh, I'm doing cardio at this time and then not expressing it and then the wires getting crossed and that causing a lot of frustration. And I mean, 
something that could have very easily been sidestepped if there would have been something in place. And I think Google Calendar is something that works really well for us. Yeah. I mean, this is going to come down to everything where expectations are everything when you're when you're buying something within relationships, within everything that you have going on, setting uh, good expectations within things and not overselling what you're going to do or what have you, because you could do the Google Calendar, not follow the Google Calendar, yeah. and it's, it's the same issue. So expectations are, are the big root of this and setting them properly is going to be big. So utilizing the Google Calendar and then actually doing it at that time, because there could be a situation where Sue puts in that she's doing cardio at X time and then she doesn't do cardio and then she does it later in the day. And I'm like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I thought you did cardio this morning, not because I'm upset that she's doing cardio at that moment. It's just that my expectation was not fulfilled or was incorrect. And so having those better expectations are important. And I think that the Next thing that I would really add to it is that um, being self-aware enough to be able to say, I'm not in a good headspace to have this conversation right now. Can we please address it at a later time is really, really important because there's going to be times in your prep, especially later on into like three, four weeks out and closer you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're a little bit more irritable. It's been a little bit of time since your last meal. Um, you're feeling a little bit run down from cardio, got a little bit of a headache, a little bit of brain fog going on, and something may transpire that just uh, you know, uh, lights a fire under your rear a little bit and you may snap. And that may be something that you experience and being able to take a step back and say, that is not how I feel. I want to I want to address this and I want to express why this bothered me, but right now is not really a time for me to do so. So I will come back to this after my next meal probably or maybe tomorrow or what have you, but it's really important to be able to have the self-reflection in the moment. And I know that that is painfully easier said than done and certainly is going to come with a lot of experience and time and those different factors, but trying to do so is only go is the only way that you're going to figure out how to do that. So taking cracks at it and you're going to like catch yourself too late and then it's going to get a little bit better and a little bit better every single time until you get to a point where you can really catch yourself in the moment. And then that's when it's really going to be a valuable tool for you. Yeah. Um, and I would say another thing as far as if you are a spouse or a, someone in a relationship with someone in prep, a huge way that you can support them is by not complaining about the things that they already know they have to do. I can tell you from experience that it makes you already feel you already feel shitty, and then you feel even shittier when someone gives you a hard time about something that you either don't want to do or you know you need to do, and that's just the fact of the matter. And so an example of this is if you're saying, oh, I still have to get X amount of steps in, and them to be like, oh, okay, okay. You're just, you're doing steps all the time, or I have to go do my cardio and them to complain about it because that is very hard. And not to say that we're ever perfect about it. I've definitely complained to Alex about something work related or prep related or something and vice versa. So we're not coming from a place of perfection or from a pedestal. We're coming from a place of we are always learning and evolving within our relationship to make these situations better and easier for each other. Because if you truly love someone, and you want them to succeed, you need to take a step and reflect before you speak. And that is also the same of if you are in prep and you want to succeed and you're having friction, you need to take a step back and see where there is either fault of your own or where you can make something a little bit better. It's going to come a lot from not just having that gut reaction. It's going to come from, all right, what are the factors going into this? Am I upset because of something else? Am I frustrated because of something else? Was it an expectation situation? What was going on here that caused us to have this friction to then be able to dig into it and make the changes? I mean, just the other day, I mean, like Alex is talking about of my cardio's in the calendar, something happened. I didn't move it because it was in my head. Oh, I'll just get it done at this point. That's not fair to him because he was counting on me getting it done at that time. And then it got to the point of me saying, oh, I have to do X, Y, and Z. And he had just wanted to spend time with me. And then I was I was frustrated. And at the root of it, it was really, I should have just moved it in my calendar and been a better communicator. But I can also I was also frustrated in that moment because I was just like, well, I need to get this done. 
but I had a fault there as well. So being able to admit when you've made a, a fault or a mistake and being able to give grace to the other person when they do that as well so that you can keep moving forward. Because prep is volatile. Prep is hard. Prep can be really fun. So like Alex said, of that mentality shift of instead of just talking about the negatives and thinking prep is going to be hard, everything's hard. It's being able to just go into each day and have a mindset of, okay, what do I need to get done today? How do I need to communicate today? How am I feeling today? Touch base with yourself. And then being able to move into your day instead of starting off and just thinking, oh, this is going to be sucky and I'm going to have a sucky attitude and everyone around me just has to deal with it because I'm trying to win. Right. And on that note, no one's making you compete. You are making the decision to compete. If you don't want to compete, don't compete. Um, the thing that I will tell for uh, significant others and uh, spouses is that patience and being able to put yourself in the significant others, the competitor's shoes is going to be very, very important. I think that um, when you are having conversation and there may be a greater irritation or what have you or frustration that's expressed, understand. And, and, and a simple thing for me is that I, un, I, I get it. And so that's a little bit easier in terms of the, the factors. But I will say, if you were to look at, let's say from a, a male to a female scenario, if I was to eat the food that Sue is eating, I would be very hangry all day. <laughs> I would be pretty grumpy all day. And so if she's in a scenario where she's not feeling the best or what have you, I'm going to have a lot of patience with that because I know that if it was the roles were reversed and I was intaking that food, I was performing the cardio, I was doing the training, I was doing all the stuff that she's doing for work, I would probably be the same, if not worse. <laughs> probably worse. And so in that, it's going to be something where I, I carry much more patience in that. So it's going to be something that you have to have a high level of patience. Try not to take everything so personal. There's going to be moments where tensions are high for whatever reason, and you have to be able to just navigate the conversation and understand that there may be things that are expressed from an emotional standpoint that are not totally sincere. And understanding and, and addressing that at the moment is very important. And I think that on top of this is addressing things when they need to be addressed and not, and this is something we talked about last yeah. episode, but um, allowing for yourself to have that conversation and just be honest with how you feel and how you have felt in terms of how things have been expressed to you and those different factors and having that open dialogue is going to be important, but also not coming from a place of, of anger because it's like the person who is in prep is already in a, uh, a, a place of, of higher irritability to begin with you have the power to not add to that, um, no matter how frustrated you are or um, unheard or whatever the, the scenario is for you in that scenario, you have the upper leg because of the scenario that you're in. So in that kind of, it would dominant be a, dominant's kind of a strong word yeah. there. <laughs> dominant's not the word. <laughs> Having that upper leg, it's important to utilize that in a positive manner and put yourself in a position where you're more patient as a whole. Yeah. And just a simple example of that, if you're wondering how to implement that, we were having a meeting one day and it was Alex and I and actually Miguel. And we were sitting there and Alex kind of saw me start to get a little bit uh, more short and he started to see my eyes gloss over, I'm sure. And he just looks over and he says, let's go ahead and take a break. Sue's going to eat and then we're going to start back. And I wasn't even thinking about, oh, it's time to eat because I was very focused at the task at hand. And I didn't want to be the one to interrupt and be like, oh, I need to eat. And he was able just to extend just some love to me. And instead of being like, well, I'm not hungry, just keep pushing through. He was able to put himself into my perspective, understand and say, you know what? we're taking a break right now. Sue is going to go eat. And not that he was telling me what to do, but, you know, in the situation, he understood what I needed and I was able to eat, feel a lot better yeah. and then be able to take that next step that I needed to do. So just being able to, again, coming from a place of love and support. And if you are the spouse or the significant other or the person in the relationship with the competitor, if at the beginning of prep, you said that you were in for the prep and you were going to support them, and then when it gets hard, you bow out, that's really shitty. Like, yeah. that is really, really shitty because if you have told this person, and we talked and touched on this in the last episode, 
of what you say um, within, we talked about it within communication. If you say you forgive someone, but you don't actually forgive someone, that's also really shitty because they're under an expectation or an understanding that, hey, we've moved past this and then you bring it back up. That's really unfair. If you don't forgive them, don't say that you forgive them. And the same thing, if you're not going to support them, then don't say that they have your support because when it gets to halfway or closer to a show, five, four, three, two, one weeks out or the week of, and you're giving them grief and not supporting them and making them feel really bad, why do you tell them you had they had your support? Because not only are they in a very sensitive, vulnerable spot and fragile spot, you have now just taken away your love and support when they need it most. And that is also very hurtful to a relationship as a whole, just what I was saying at the beginning. And so be very careful about how you say you're going to show up because those expectations are also held from the competitor end. And if you say, I'm all in, let's do it, I support you, and then you start giving them grief because you want to go and do things and you feel like you just can't wait for things to be normal again, that might just be something you keep to yourself until the end of prep and you're able to have a conversation of what it looks like of if they do another competition moving forward. I'll play devil's advocate to that. What if it's much harder and this is the first the person's first prep that they've ever seen and this is the first prep that that um, competitor's ever done? What if it's just way harder and then what they expected? And what do you do then? I would say in that situation, still being able to extend that grace and understanding and have a conversation. It all comes back to communication in my eyes of, hey, is this what we both want to do right now? Is this serving us both? And is this where we're going with this as well as what happens next? I think having those touch points of, I know you and I have touch points of, hey, I really need this from you right now because this is getting to this point. And I would really need this from you to be able to be successful because I'll say for this prep, we didn't expect a lot of the things that have popped up within life and work and just the demand that has been expected out of both of us. That wasn't necessarily the fullest understanding when we went into this prep whatsoever. And so that's something that we've had to navigate. So how would you say that we've gone through that? Um, well, before we get into us, I think that, um, one thing that I will express that the individual is like, this is harder than I would have imagined it to be, which is probably going to happen. Honestly, if they've never been around competing in general, it's probably going to be harder to, uh, sit on the sidelines and, and be the cheerleader and those different factors. Um, so I would have that conversation and focus on finding, etching out more time for you guys to spend more quality time together. And when we speak on quality time, I think that that is oftentimes a big solution to all this of like mm -hmm. getting to have that quality time because they feel as though that they're being uh, deprioritized to the prep them themselves or itself. And so I think that that's an important piece of etching out time in your schedule and you can make it work. I, I, I know that your schedule is already crazy, but the reality is, is that you can find an extra hour. You can find an extra... I mean, 30 minutes at, at, at the bare minimum throughout your day to make your uh, significant other feel special and spend time with them as a, as a whole, um, because you can be more efficient with your time always. So yeah. that's the, the one piece that I will say there for Sue and I, in terms of the things that we've done, I think that it, it is a lot of, um, rolling with the punches and un like we've been very lucky in the sense of both of us have been pretty exhausted throughout this prep yes. itself. <laughs> and so I, I don't know if that's really lucky, but it, it's a, it's an really aspect. lucky. We've both been dragging. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's something in which we're both tired for different reasons, I guess. And I guess it would be a lot different if she was in this like hella push of life. And I was just like going to a nine to five and I was done with work at five o'clock and then I had the weekends totally off. Like it would be a much different scenario and much harder. I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine um, if that was the case, if I was, if I had the weekends and, and Sue was doing all the stuff that she's doing. So I think that it works because we are both so busy. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a, a big help for us, if you will. Um, our communication and being able to navigate scenarios when they happen is very important. Um, I, one big thing for us is 
being able to, um, that self-reflection that I spoke on, I think that the, the self-reflection that we both carry has improved abundantly over the last, uh, six months. I mean, over the last year, but, um, really since the move, uh, we've just put ourselves in a scenario where it's been a sprint from the moment we got here. And it's been something where we've had to improve our communication from the jump for it to all even come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I will also say this is that, um, within my relationship with Sue, I, Austin and I had already started physique development. I know this is kind of off topic, but I do want to share this is that, uh, we had started physique development and as Sue, uh, and I got married, Sue came on and, and I would in like, it's crazy. The, the quality of the communication and just the inclusion of you into the business has catapulted things as a whole. And I think that the communication itself is a big root of that, as well as obviously your expertise and, and the things that you bring to the table, but the communication itself is a big piece of the puzzle. So for guys out there who are feeling like they are stuck within their business, find, <laughs> find, find a, wife. a super hot wife that is willing to work alongside <laughs> you. And then all of a sudden things, the breakthroughs happen. <laughs> you didn't know you were getting great business yeah. advice with this too. This well, true. thank you for uh, saying that. But uh, I, I do just think that obviously the root of this is a lot of communication and a lot of self-reflection and being able to prioritize the things that matter to you. And I know for me, the things that matter right now are our relationship, our business growth and prep. And so with those at the top, I also have had to have conversations with family and friends and say, hey, right now is a really big push in my life. I would really appreciate if you just know that I love you and I support you and I'm here for you. But if I'm not reaching out as much, I'm I'm really going through it right now. And so that's another thing is I had to vocalize to those other people. And in past preps, I didn't. And then friends felt very hurt and very left out and just deprioritized like Alex mentioned. And so uh, again, I have to be the one to say, hey, this is what's going on with me in order for you to support me or for me to um, continue on with this, I really need you to do X. So some other things that you can do that are supportive because we know our situation isn't everyone's situation. Just like Alex said, and we were talking about this the other day, if we both weren't working on the business right now, it would be so hard to have someone working as much as we do, and then to have someone else have an office job where they're off at specific times and aren't working for themselves. So we understand that. So we do want to talk about a few other things that can be done um, to be supportive. So um, one is going to be being able to communicate, obviously, but setting boundaries is going to be a huge one of, hey, I really need these comments not to be said or these things to not be joked about because Alex and I will have things that we joke about in general or me and my family have things we joke about. And then we get to a point where I say, hey, right now I really can't handle that being something that's joked about or being something that's said, or I really need to stop work at this time to be able to accomplish this. Whatever it may be, setting boundaries is really going to be helpful in your professional life, your personal life, and then your relational life as well. Um, other things that you can do as someone supporting a competitor is asking questions and asking caring questions. Ask how you can support them because each person's going to be different. Ask about their day. Ask about how they're feeling. Ask if there's anything that you can do to help them. And also know not that you should ask questions in hopes that someone else asks the same question back, but being able to ask those questions in hopes that it does kind of settle in their mind that, hey, I'm thinking about you and I support you. And I also want that in return because you always want to be the person that you also want them to act. And that's something that Alex and I have learned within our relationship is leading from the front. If I want Alex to do something, I should be willing to do that or support him in that way and vice versa. Um, offering practical help. So if they're saying, hey, I'm super stressed, I'm falling behind with X, Y, and Z saying, hey, can I go ahead and fold the laundry today? Or can I go ahead and help you with meal prep or just be in here and talk to you as you meal prep and being able to, again, just offer some practical help that's going to be able to have success for you guys as a team. Because that's the other thing is that you're a team in this. Even if one person is competing and the other one isn't, you're still a team within your relationship and keeping that at the center is going to be extremely helpful. 
Yes. And, and I think that this comes back to kind of the thought process of like, I make a lot of analogies to sports. So um, as you guys have learned over the podcast, so you think of this as the thought of like Sue is the athlete or the player on the football field. She could be the quarterback, if you will. Whereas in the business, we're on the field together, but with her in prep, even I, I've got a headset on because I'm a coach in the aspect, but I'm also a cheerleader. I've got a double role here. First <laughs> he quarter. He has a skirt on and a headset. <laughs> right. First quarter, I'm, I got the headset on. Second quarter, I've got the, the skirt on. And so <laughs> in that aspect, think of it in that thought process that helps me. I know that for some individuals who are listening, who have a sports background, relating things to sports always make it a little bit easier to digest uh, for myself. So uh, I think that that's a useful tool. Yeah. And I also think it's very helpful to validate someone's feelings and to be proactive within your conversation to, again, just sidestep things that don't really need to happen as they go through it. But I did want to kind of circle back to something that's difficult within prep, and that's going to be like going out to dinners and date nights and what that looks like. So do you want to talk about things that we either have done wrong or have done right in those situations? Last um, prep was a little bit different with it being a COVID prep, but yeah. The one thing I'll, I'll kind of add on to the last part is when you are the, the sig significant other who's supporting the competitor, when they come to you with something that's going on, I would clarify before they start to speak, are you wanting advice or something that I can help with? Or do you just want me to listen? Because there's going to be times that the prep is just hard and your significant other wants to lean into you and uh, blow off some steam or uh, be frustrated or what have you. It has nothing to do with you. You're just kind of the ear uh, that's there and that's okay. But there's going to also be times that maybe your significant other is looking for advice on something or help on something like the folding the towels or, or what have you. Um, and I think that clarifying that up front and again, setting expectations properly, one, allows for you to listen better, but also puts you in a position where you can actually be beneficial in that moment and not cause greater friction because there's certainly been times where I did not do this and Sue is coming to me with something going on and I'm thinking my initial response to absolutely everything is how can I fix this? How can I make this better? I can always make everything better in my mind. And so in that, there are just times where that's just not what we're looking for. We just want to listen or we want you to listen and that's it. So uh, creating that clarification is very important. That was an excellent point and we are both fixers. So it has been something that we had to learn through a lot of trial and error of, again, that communication of being able to just know and ask what that person is wanting so you can have that clarity because you can't expect someone to know exactly what you're thinking. You just can't. And the second that I truly understood that, I think the better things got for both of us because I was just able to vocalize more things and vice versa so that we could just keep learning about each other and keep knowing how to be a better partner for one another. Yeah. Um, Coming to the question about going out uh, for like, are you just speaking to food specifically? Food as well as just like date nights are a huge part of a lot of people's relationships or going to grab drinks with friends, going over to a friend's house and all of that, which gets a little bit more complicated when you're in prep. It doesn't mean 100% you can't do those things, but it does get a little complicated. Sure. I, I think that within um, going out and doing things, there are going to be things that you can do that don't involve food necessarily. Um, I, I think that going over to friends and, and I kind of have like a, I have a little bit of a cheat code in the sense that you do a good job. If we go somewhere, it's not the end of the world if you don't eat and, and I don't like make a big deal out of it. Like I get to order what I want to eat and we move forward with it. And now do we, do we go out to eat of just Sue and I, and I eat and Sue stares? No, <laughs> that is not what I'm speaking to. I'm saying that if friends, if friends ask us to go do something, if she's comfortable with going, she'll eat before or she'll eat after. I always recommend before. I never understand why she does it after. <laughs> That scenario is fine, but in the sense of just Sue and I both, I think that um, in those scenarios, doing things at home, um, they're like you can go on Google and find hundreds of ideas of date nights and things to do uh, that don't involve food and getting out into your community and doing things that way, I think is very important. Going on walks, I think is something that... Um, 
you know, many people kind of look past of just getting that time to sit and have a uh, conversation more so. And uh, you get to learn a lot about each other in that scenario because you're much more focused on one another and not the thing that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You're focused more on actually quality time. So I actually see it as kind of a benefit. Um, and for the the guys out there that their significant other is uh, in prep or what have you, um, or, or their female significant other is in prep, I should specify, in that it's a good opportunity for you to eat better yourself. <laughs> you'll have more, but you'll have less junk food around if, if you guys are living together and you'll find yourself in a situation where it could be a good time for you to learn more from a nutritional perspective, potentially not asking your spouse for all the advice as they are fatigued and they've got <laughs> enough on their plate in general, but it could be a good time for you to kind of take the reins to your own diet and have better um, nutritional intake and those different factors. Yeah. And and we do miss the aspect. Of we, we've talked about it multiple times throughout this prep of like, oh, I miss just being able to like swing by someplace on the way home instead of always having to pack something because me personally and just kind of how we're going about this prep. Basically, since eight or 10 weeks out, I haven't really eaten out unless it's something programmed in. I've cooked everything and not had packaged food or processed foods, really. It's been every meal has been cooked by myself so that I can control all of the variables. And that is hard. And it's hard to be like, oh, I wish we could just go grab Chipotle or Rebel, or we could just go out to dinner and go grab Mexican and have fun. But it is something that we understand that there this is a specific time that that's just not happening. It doesn't mean that it's never going to happen ever again. It will definitely happen for sure. Uh, and being able to, like Alex said, just find those other things and being able to run with that. So instead of thinking about what you can't have, and this is a life lesson, think about what you can have. So you can still have conversation. And we really prioritize that within our, our relationship of we don't watch a ton of TV shows or spend a lot of time um, doing those types of things because we're like, hey, we're super busy throughout the day. We don't get a chance to talk. So we're going to ensure that we have 30 minutes to an hour each evening to really spend time together and talk. And whether that does mean we go on a walk with our dogs or we go on a walk just the two of us and bonus, you get some extra steps in, um, or we just sit and talk with one another, that's something really special and really valuable and a way that we can grow our relationship even within a prep, which I think a lot of times people think that you can't grow your relationship within a prep because there's so many other things that you're doing or prioritizing. But our relationship has been a very large priority throughout this prep and throughout past preps as well um, of making sure that we touch base with each other and making sure that we're continuing um, to flourish within our goals. Um, but before we end this podcast, I think one important thing to talk about, especially because we've talked a lot as far as romantic relationships, well, I just remembered something as far as friends before we go into that. If you are going out to eat with friends or going over to a friend's house, again, having a conversation of just saying, hey, please don't make a comment about food. I'm going to keep it chill. Now, I am thankful and we are thankful that we have a lot of friends that understand and support that. So it's never a big deal. We recently just went to Florida with friends. Not once when we went out to eat or did something together, did anyone make a comment that I was eating something different? I honestly don't even think Hayden knew that I was in prep. And so it's something that you, you definitely knew you, were impressed, <laughs> you can be very casual about it. Just don't make a big deal about it and also vocalize to other people that you don't want them to make a big deal about it. But I'll just bring my food with me. If we're going over to a friend's house, they eat something else. I sit there. We had friends over the other night. They all ate something. I ate my own meal sitting there, just not making excessive comments about it. And it's a lot more normal than sitting there and being like, oh, I can't eat this or you guys enjoy it because I can't because those really do add to a weird ambiance for yourself and for the other people. <laughs> I, I will add, though, that all the, our our friends, especially the, the, the scenarios that you've talked about, have been in the fitness realm. Yeah. So I think that making a point of like individuals not in the fitness realm and taking our own personal experience out of it and kind of going back to the individuals of like navigating through that and being willing to educate as much as the person's probably willing to hear is is important but also 
just having a little bit of thicker skin is going to be important there where you can vocalize uh, at points, but there are going to be some individuals as you guys probably have found that are just probably going to continue to poke fun at you because that could be an insecurity that they have within themselves from a, you know, their lack of nutritional adherence or what have you, or whatever their preconceived notion of bodybuilding is and those different things. So there are going to be points where you can't, um, diffuse absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. You can lessen it, but it's going to be something where you're going to have to have thicker skin throughout a contest prep. Uh, you can't let everything get to you and those different things too. Yeah. But it does also come back to just telling that person of, Hey, this is what the situation is. I'm going to be bringing my own food. And if you are trying to support someone within a prep, don't buy them food that's perishable that you know that they can't have and then get mad at them for not eating it. Yeah. I've seen that pop up of like clients being around their birthday day, someone gets them or like a family member or an in-law gets them something and then is like, oh, you don't want to have my cooking or you don't appreciate it. That, I mean, they can't, they do appreciate it, but they can't just physically eat it right then. So being able to be respectful, that's a huge part of the support as well is the respect that goes along with what that person is trying to achieve. Um, but what I wanted to talk about romantically was just sex drive changing. So when someone is in a prep, it is very, very likely that their libido is going to go down. And we did talk about this in the series of what to know as a first time competitor, but I do think it is worth mentioning because I do know it is difficult as that libido goes down for the other person to be as understanding because you feel less of a connection with them because that intimacy might not be there. And you might have a certain narrative that you start spinning in your head of, oh, they don't find me attractive anymore. Or they don't want to spend time with me or they, they don't have that for me anymore. And so I think that's something important to discuss as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it's important for sure. I think that um, there there are multiple ways to express love as like intimate touch is going to be a big one. But I think that there's other ways to also go about, it, especially in that scenario where you have to continue to express love um, because you can drift apart in that scenario, especially if the individual is like that is their love language as a whole mm -hmm. is touch. And so putting yourself in a scenario where you have a better understanding of those different facets. And as I'm talking through this, as if I'm an expert of some sort, I can't even like uh, actually of service because that is mine <laughs> specifically. So like there's multiple, I think there's like seven, five, five. There we go. <laughs> um, Sue is more of the expert on this than I am, but in that context, finding other ways to express love, to show compassion, those different things are going to be very important in this scenario because that is just the reality of this, the, the space. Yeah. And being able to ask your partner, significant other, like how they are feeling through it. If you are the competitor, because it's good to touch base and for them to say, Hey, I feel in love. Don't take it super personal like Alex has mentioned, of you have to have some thicker skin and you have to recognize, hey, even though they understand I'm working towards a goal, they understand I'm tired, their feelings still need to be validated here as well. So being able to have that push and pull is really, really important because it's not just about you, even if it is a selfish sport and even if this is for the people that are the non-competitors supporting the competitors, if you're the competitor, you still need to show love and support even though prep is hard, because I can say, or at least I, I hope that I can say that throughout prep, I've made a very large effort. And I hope that Alex feels it every single day to let him know that even though I'm going through it, his stuff that he's going through still matters and that his feelings are still very much so validated. So as a competitor, don't say, well, at least you're not on low food, or at least you're not on high cardio, or at least you're not X, Y, and Z, because that doesn't help anyone in the situation. It doesn't make the other person feel better and it probably should not make you feel better either. So being able to have that understanding that that person still has a life, that person still has feelings, that person still has struggles and that doesn't invalidate yours, but it doesn't invalidate theirs either. Yep. Sweet. Do you have any last words that you would say to either the competitor or the support system for the com competitor? Um, I don't think, I think we touched on everything. Yeah. 
If you guys have other questions, there's always the Google form in the show notes. But um, just big points here, if you couldn't tell already, are communication, reflection, and being very transparent about what is wanted and or needed. And you will sidestep a lot of the issues that couples or relationships have throughout prep. Um, It's not always going to be perfect, but it's going to be great. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We hope that you enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you on the next one.